Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're gonna to be looking at Java basic data types and variables. All right, so as you can see, Java still have Boolean, your numeric types and under numeric types, you're gonna have a character. Now we're gonna talk more about character when we look at strings, but the character is a number in C, C++, Go, and in Java. And it's interchangeable. You use a number to say, this is a character that I want to print out that represent this number. Or you can say, here's a character. And then I want to print out the, the number associated with it. So those two things are so tightly linked that you basically can't get away from it. Um, in C, we had a character was a byte. And then certain extension in C allow you to do like white character and all these other things. In C++, you had actually three characters. You had a one byte, eight bits, 16 bits, and a 32-bit character. In Go, you had a rune, which is sort of a character, and that was 32 bits. And Go didn't play around with all the different sizes. Um, in Java, a character is 16 bits, but we'll get to that in a minute. We have our integral type, all right? And then, of course, you have your floating point type, and we'll see how to declare variables and print them out. But before we do, let's take a look at our Boolean types. So the keyword there you have associated with Boolean is the Boolean keyword itself as a type and the two values, which we know by now is a true and false. Go, the Java people, I guess they like typing. So the developer of the language, designer of the language. Um, so they spelled out Boolean instead of going with the nice little short bool like we have in Go or even in C++. Um, so um, that's just how they did it. They, they spelled it out. In terms of our integral types, um, I've been lamenting how C++, for example, made this basic data types even more complicated than C. Um, so in Go, we started out, they sort of simplified it. You know, there's no confusion about what size is what. I think Java probably went a little bit even further and say we're going to have a character. Like I said, it's 16 bits. We have a byte, 8 bits, because you're still going to always need to deal with that very basic of fundamental um, unit of bytes. Um, if you're doing a system programming language, C, C++, and Go, then you might want to even get to a bit, but you usually don't have a type to specify a bit. So eight bits is as low as you really want to go in terms of being able to quantify a number of bits. And then you have a 16-bit integer value, which is a short. So character is going to be used to represent a printable character or even a non-printable character um, that you might see in a screen or represent something in a file and short is going to be used as you know it's intended as an integer value and then you have int which is 32 bit long is 64 bit no variable set of meanings like you have in c and c plus plus okay noticeably absent from this list are unsigned types all these are signed types so that is your one limitation and i'll when i i've been programming java for a while and i never really thought much about using unsigned types. Um, because I really not, really not doing system programming, really didn't worry about it. I just use a variable, a type that is big enough to hold the value I'm trying to store. So never really thought about it. I'll show you a, um, a quote, apparently from, I found it in, um, when I was looking on the web for why doesn't Java have the reason for not having unsigned int and Basically, is from Graslin, the guy who um, was one of the designers of the language, and he basically saying that oh, you know, it complicates things, and most C programmers don't really understand it. There's some issue with unsigned type when you do arithmetic, with values wrapping, and then some confusion about what happened when you mix signed and unsigned type in um, equations. But other than that, I don't think it's such a big deal. I don't think most of the problem in C or C++ programs are as a result of because they have unsigned type. I really think if that was the case, when Go, the guys at Google went and did Go, they would have been like, you know, there's one of the things that we don't want to put in because it's a source of confusion. And I'm not saying that they fix everything that's sort of caused problem in C and C++, but they fixed a lot of it. Wouldn't I don't think that's one thing they would have overlooked, okay? So um, that's my opinion. But here's the other thing. One of the things I noticed with Java, even from the very, very early days, is they try to differentiate themselves from C++ at a time. Like, we don't have pointer arithmetic, we don't have this, we don't have that. And then, and at the time, C++ had um, templates, which we haven't talked about yet. And later on, Java included pretty much the same thing with the same semantics, basically with an angle bracket. 
and they call it generics. But it was done after the fact when they saw C++ with this thing. And even now with Java not having unsigned type, well, that was before, but guess what? Java 8, they introduced unsigned type. So it's obvious that they, had, they went back and look at it and go, hey, you know what? This makes sense to put in the language. So I think, um, you know, the developer at the time, and this always happened with every language, you know, there's always some revision history that happens there to go back and look at it and go, hmm, I guess we should have put this in, or no, it makes sense to put it in. So I'm not going to ding them too hard, just that this comment is sort of old because Java 8 now has unsigned type. All right. In terms of your floating point type, um, they have float and double, not uh, anything like, you know, long double and all this other crazy stuff, right? So just float and double. Float is 32-bit int, double is 64-bit. And that's it. Very simple. Not much I could say there. They kept it pretty simple. Um, declare a variable. It looks just like they're doing C, C++, which is you put the type first and the identifier after. Remember, these languages really try to get people from the programmers from the other language that they're trying to say they're better on or of or they want to improve so they try to not change too much go is sort of like um you know what yeah we want c plus plus programmer we want group program we want all these other programmers but it wasn't afraid to break things that didn't make sense and certainly the type system in c and c plus plus is a pain i keep saying that we haven't seen it yet but trust me if you know those languages and you can't admit that it's painful, then I don't know. You're probably lying to yourself. Um, but that's fine. Still love you anyway. But anyway, um, Java, it's type identifier and type identifier equal with an expression so you can initialize it. Um, the one thing that Java did that C++ didn't do um, is that if you declare a variable and you don't initialize it, it's an error. It not only warns you it's an error. Now, I said in an earlier video it warns you, but it actually is an error, which um, I never really noticed that because, I don't know, I always declare my variable. And we might talk about that later on. Um, in C++, this idea of resource allocation is resource initialization. So basically, anytime you get some resource, you should always initialize it. And so that's what I practice. So really, I never noticed in um, a language really besides C or C++ that you just get garbage if you don't initialize things. That's just stuff that I knew uh, from years of programming a language. But in Java, I just always initialize things anyway. So never, I never really noticed that there was an error. I always thought it was a warning. So, But I'm stand corrected. I've been programming Java for a long time, but it is an error. Your program will not compile. Not a warning. It's an error. You learn something new every day, right? Even though I've been programming that language for so long. Oh, well. And so, all right, so that's it. Basically, very simple and straightforward to declare variables. So let's jump in. Let's take a look. Um, fun stuff. So I'm going to start up um, my editor here. And I'm going to copy our C or Go. Let's copy the Go application and the Go example. And then we're going to rename things as usual. Um, for Java, we'll have to do a little bit more surgery. Um, Java has package, so we can leave them package mean for now, but we'll change it later. Um, and the functions, of course, everything got to be in a class, so we can create a class called main. And of course, if we're, this is our public class, remember, oh, we have to have a file with the same name, so hence, our file is called main at Java, or class is called main at Java. Uh, we don't want to um, create an instance before we use it, so we're going to make our functions public static also, so we can just call them. And of course, all our statement must end, term end with a semicolon, so we gotta go put that in. So a little painful, but oh well. Um, now remember, Java doesn't have unsigned types, so we have to leave these unsigned correct and everything. Now we are taking these out in Go because, um, well, the second one, because you couldn't um, have a variable that you didn't um, use and we didn't use them that's we didn't use them that's why um, otherwise so that they would have been fine and go but we didn't use them that's why um, so the other thing is in java you can have a you can put l at the end of a thing you can do it in c and c plus also to say oh this is a long you can put an f at the end of a value to say float i want to make this a float value or d at the end to say i want to make it a double value 
and notice some of the things that we had that could fit into our long in the previous languages that don't fit in Java because they would have been too long. Um, they would overflow. I had to remove that leading zero because that makes it an octal number and that would have been, as an octal value, that would have been too big to fit inside of um, that long, that Java long. So after we've done that, we try to compile, we see it all, we have this error here about um, the format specifier. And that's because I left the Go format specifier in, which were um, the, the, the percent V. So we have to go modify that. And for Java, we're gonna use B for Boolean, C for the character. And even though we have a byte integer and a long, they all gonna be D. But for the long, I'm gonna use hexadecimal. And for the float and the double, just use the percent F um, <clears throat> printf specifier and that's it. Now, the other thing we have in here now is, remember what I said, if you, declare a variable in Java and you try to use it, using it, even though I just declared it and try to print it, that's considered using it, right? Because I declared a variable and I try to read from it. So Java is flagging that, hey, you try to read from it and it's probably garbage at that location. Is that what you really want to do? This is not meaningful. So please initialize this variable. In this way, it is forcing you to make sure to you never use it without properly initializing it. And so I must go ahead now and initialize these variables. So I'm gonna set the flag to be false, and then I'm gonna set the integer values and the characters to be zero. All of them are essentially set to zero. The only thing I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna set the double to a value. And the reason why I'm not gonna set it is because I wanna show you that you don't have to initialize your variable uh, when you create it. You could still create a variable, not initialize it, but so long as you initialize it before you use it, that's all they care about, is that you initialize it before you use it. So I'm gonna initialize mine before I print it out. And so that's what I did. And so now, if um, I rerun my code, um, now the other thing I'm having in here is it's saying it can't find a class main. And that's because even though our class is in this package main, and when we try to run it, well, we're not saying at all we need to run main that main, you know, main the package that main the class or the main class that's in the main package, if that makes sense to you. But basically we need to really say Java main that main, and of course use the current class path that would have worked. But considering we're using um, this run code plugin, um, it is just trying to call it as main. So what we'll do is we'll comment out um, the package line there and so we don't have to use a package and we'll run it that way um, Later on when we need to actually put stuff in different packages and use a package then yes We'll um, end up having to fix this issue either We're gonna go, go to the command line and run our code or we're gonna fix it so that run code does the right thing either way um, But for now as we can see the output, you know, is just exactly as you expect um, you have the hexadecimal output at the bottom on line four, um, and you have the float and the double being printed out. Uh, we could have printed out in scientific notation if we wanted to, but the bottom line is that um, notice all your flags, your Boolean values print out, um, just like in Go. It's not like in C++ where it's an alias for an int, so nothing funny like that. All right. Now, one of the other things we can do is go back and say, well, how different is our code from, let's say, Go code? And it, this is just sort of doing a simple comparison to show how these languages, like I said, they got inspiration from each other. And so they don't look that very different, um, as you can see. Um, both languages, we commented out line 42 and 43 in the Java because we don't have unsigned. And then we commented out the same two lines basically in Go because we weren't printing them, so we can't have variables that we don't use. Um, in Java, I believe that if we have variables that we don't use, it would just probably warn us. I don't think it, that's an error. I'm almost certain that's not an error. These are some very simple examples so far. I'm just looking at the basic things. Uh, later on, we will get to more complicated things. Remember, I'm not really trying to teach you these languages. Uh, we just like lightly just looking at the different ways in which these languages accomplish certain things. So 
in Java, there's no unsigned int type. You just cannot say it, okay? Well, unless you use Java 8. So if you want to be able to say unsigned int of anything, you have to go to Java 8. So maybe by the time you watch this video, you're probably on Java 8 because it's out already. Follow me on Twitter. It's at Straversity1. Instagram, it's Straversity. And I'll see you in the next video. Um, bye.